Are you new to manifesting? Or have you been around the block and you've been studying the law, the different laws of traction and of assumption for a while? Well, I want to share with you something that I don't see a lot of people talking about, and that is these very common phases of when we are introduced to manifesting to where you see the change in your own life. And I've noticed these different mental phases or states of consciousness that people go through. And I want to share these to really normalize and validate wherever you are and that you're not responsible for pulling yourself out of these states. And this is wrapped up from a lecture of Neville Goddard of the one greater than John. And I'm not going to dive too deep into that um, lecture, but I will, if you guys like me to, I will make another video if you comment and let me know. But I want to share with you, this video is more about the different states of consciousness, or let's call them phases that people go through when they learn about manifestation and why it feels the way it does and that you're not stuck, you're not even responsible. And why I'm, why I'm saying that is, is because you didn't put yourself there, right? Remember, when you know who you are, you didn't put yourself there. So you're not responsible to get yourself out of this. You're not doing this alone. Welcome. My name is Rose. Welcome to The Rosy Life, where we help you free your mind and follow your heart so you live a life that you love. You notice I keep saying you, 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 because it's all about you, 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 or like that song, me, 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 me. I don't know what song it is. Don't call me. But there is a song that starts off that way. Anyway, if you're interested in working one-on-one -on -one with me, you can go to rosylife.com. If you're expecting me to not be goofy and to be very luxury, this is not that channel, okay? Because this is goofball, and I like to make anything about manifesting and spirituality fun and easy, but profound. Okay, so ah, let's get to it. Oh, by the way, I have an exciting thing to tell you guys. For those of you who are looky-loos and haven't subscribed, you might want to start subscribing. I'm going to tell you why and put that little notification on. Here's why. Many of you know, and many of you are July, my July babies from last summer. Okay, so if you know, you know, right? If you're new, that's when the Rosie Life really started blowing up, but she's not done there. Oh no, Rosie Life's just begun. She's blowing up. But let me tell you what's happening this July, because in celebration of last July, I have a bunch of yummy, fun, delicious surprises for you guys. So there's going to be different points in July and I'm going to be sneaking in the middle of videos and I'm never going to say which one because it's a surprise. And I'm going to be doing certain giveaways for different things and you're not going to know what it is because I'm going to be sneaking them in the middle of a video. So you might want to subscribe and hit the little notification if you want to know more about it. I'm not going to tell you any more than that because it's a surprise, okay? And it's a celebration. So also in July, I think I might move it from July 1st to the July 15-ish, but I'll let you know. I'm going to be starting the second Platinum program. I have never ever repeated a program before but this one is going so freaking good that it's blowing my mind and I can't wait to share the different success stories that are coming out of this program with you guys as they come to me. So be on the lookout for those and that second July program is going to be in July. I haven't opened up for signups yet, but if you are interested in it, send me an email some of you already have and let me know that you want to be put on the list to be notified for when the signups begin. Okay, because I do limit it. It's not just wide open. I do limit it on purpose. And for those of you who are in the Platinum program right now, you know why. Because of the way we have it set up, it's perfect. Okay, so let's get to this. So 
I remember reading this uh, lecture from Neville Goddard called One Greater Than John. And I think that's the name of it. But I reread it again recently and I thought, this is so powerful. Many of you know John the Baptist in the Bible and that he was really like considered out there. Like he likes like really fasted. He didn't drink. He didn't smoke. He was like a good boy and he was preaching the word of God, right? He was preaching and teaching anybody about the coming of the Messiah, the coming of Jesus, right? That's what he was teaching about, right? So, but that's a state. Remember, all the characters or people in the Bible represent states of consciousness, whether they were real people or not, who knows, right? Whatever you choose to believe, but they represent states of consciousness that we can all of us enter in. In fact, we all enter into these different states of consciousness, which is amazing news. And I'm going to get into a little bit more detail. So in this video, what I want to do is I want to walk you through the different, what I've seen are states of consciousness as someone is learning about manifesting, spirituality, waking up, enlightenment, all of these terms, and whatever it is that you're manifesting, money, all of these things, this, why is it important for you, for your money, for your health, to, for, for your SP to know this? Watch the video and you're gonna see why it is so relevant to whatever it is that you want. Because once you know what I'm about to show you, is going to rock your world. Okay, so here you are. You're in the middle. Okay, that, that's you. That's just like you, all right? There's you, and I wrote me, meaning not me, Rose, but yes, that's me too, but it's you for you to say to yourself, oh, that's me, okay? So this is you and me and my assumptions. That's you, okay? Now, we can look at different people in your life. Like I wrote mom, SP, landlord, um, a doctor, friends, money, your pet, the bank. I just put little faces to all these things, right? And it looks like all these people are separate from you. It looks like they're over there at a distance living on their house or the bank people doing their bank things in that bank building, right? And yes, that's like the whole, that's the whole fun thing, right? Is that these people are here, they're players in your game. If you watched a video, the one that I posted last on my membership channel, I talked about this about how everyone is a player in your video game, in your movie, in your life, that how boring would your game be if you were the only one driving around the track by yourself? How would you know you won? How would you know you lost? How would you know you're rich or poor? What would you have to use as a measuring point to know that you're anything? that you're healthy, that you're sick, that you have more, you have less. How would you ever know that if you were all by yourself in your game and there's no players? Do you see? So we have players in our game that help us live out our assumptions. So these players in our game help us live out our assumptions so that we can actually experience it being like, yeah, I'm, I'm the best, I, I'm, I'm the winner, I won, I, I'm number one, I'm the one. Right. How would you know if it was just by you were by yourself? Do you see? So how, how would you know you lost? And you're like, damn, I lost. How? How do you know if there's no one else playing with you? So that's why we have people and money or whatever. All the things in your life is to show you and to live out and have an experience of the thing that you believe to be true. Do you see? So people and things in your experience, in your world, in your reality, they're here as messengers, reflections of your beliefs and assumptions about yourself or about anything. And they're just cooperating with you, showing you what you got going on inside. It's that simple, you guys. 
it's that simple. So, but what happens, many people will look at, let's say, your, your, your mom, your mom, let's say, okay, well, let's not pink, pick out moms, but okay, let's think about your landlord. That could be a hit or miss, depending on who you are, right? Let's say you're looking at your landlord and you only see their face. You only see what they're talking to you, what they're saying to you, what they're demanding of you, what they're requesting of you, or what they're doing for you, good, bad, or indifferent, doesn't matter, okay? You only see their face, their body, and their little contract, and blah, 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 whatever, right? And then let's say that they say something that you don't like, and then you get upset with them, okay? This has happened to me before, by the way, right? Let's say you look at them and they say something you don't like, all right, you're reacting to what you're assuming the landlord is. You're reacting to what you're assuming about landlords in general, about this specific landlord in, in specific, right? And maybe if it's a gender, woman or, or man, right, you might be reacting to that and, and, all, and all of it mixed up. So you're thinking you're having a conversation with a landlord and and that, that they are that way and they're so mean. And it's like, no, they're only behaving based off of the your assumptions about the way you see yourself. If you see yourself as somebody that is walked all over or scammed or used or neglected or not prioritized and the way that you're seeing them. Do you see? And the way that you're seeing them is always a reflection on how you see yourself. So here you think that this person's separate from you and that you're having an interaction with them, right? But I want to take it a step further. Yes, it's about you, but I want to take it a step further. They are just a costume. They are just in a, a costume, a physical costume, a representation, a symbol representation of what you assume a landlord would do or think or be or, or act like. But what really, what's behind them? In, set, in, in other words, what's at the core of them? Who are they really? They're God. That's love. Their source, their universe, their energy. And ha that energy, God, source, right, is held, it looks like the way your landlord does, held together by your beliefs about your landlord, landlords in general, and about the concept of yourself. So whatever that is, whatever that little combo you got going on, and it's easy to know, because if they say something, how you react to it, what you're feeling, what you're thinking and that they're saying or what you're feeling about what they're saying, that's showing you what you believe. So that is what's holding it together. That is why they appear the way they do. Do you see? But doesn't matter because within them, they're God. That's God consciousness. That's source. Same thing with your mom. No matter how they behave, no matter how they act, no matter what they say, they're held together by your beliefs and assumptions about a mother, about your mother, about how you see yourself. And they, it feels like they taught you stuff. feels like it's their fault or their to credit or their to blame, but it's you. It's all you. It's all you, but within your mother is source, is God. Same thing with the bank, same thing with your pet. It's all you, it's all you. Everything, your SP, your friends, everything, everyone, money, it's all you. It's your beliefs about it, it's a belief about yourself and a belief about the thing. It's all you and it's all reflecting you. That's why, do you see, it's you and it's all emanating. It's all coming from you. You're sending, those little red lines represent all your assumptions and beliefs about yourself and about those things. Do you see? And about yourself and those things, it's the same thing. Whatever you think and assume about them is you're creating that assumption about yourself, okay? And or you're also just looking at that person that way, okay? So the little heart is God, I am, in all forms. So it doesn't matter 
what is appearing in your reality if it's a dog money the bank your mom a friend all forms it's still all god because there's nothing but god do you see so the little stick figures are costumes personality things that god occupies including you you are also your own manifestation so all these little things are are costumes right they're like costumes but what's in what's behind the costume source god love i am all that is it's perfect it's all good it doesn't matter what the costume even if the costume looks bad behind it is good it's god it's your slapping an assumption on it your beliefs your interpretation your perception of it that's what you're having arguments with that's what you think you're having to deal with that's what you think that you're having to convince or persuade that's what you're thinking you're dealing with the costumes you are not dealing with the costumes unless you think you are you got to look beyond those costumes and remember that it's all god it's all source. So when you say you de when you declare something as source as God, that's why it's all you. It's all yours and it's all good and it's all love because it's you. You're that's why you're connected to all of it because there's nothing but God. And there is, I wrote here, there is nothing but God. And that's from Dr. Um, Joseph Murphy in The Power of Subconscious Mind. And I shared this with a client, actually quite a few clients in this last week or two. And one of them specifically, I asked, I said, you know what, just for fun, just sort of like wanting, and he said this, but I'm going to paraphrase it in Rose's way, okay? Because you guys know that's what I do. I take all these like, these like formal words or whatever. And I just like, I like using my talk. Okay. And so in other words, he didn't say it this way, but this is what he was saying. Okay. He said, can you for just one day, stop asking for stuff and stop going around affirming and asking, where is it? And stop imagining and affirming and putting post-it notes all over your damn car in your house and stop wondering and worrying and searching and watching videos and reading more books and crying and saying what's wrong with me can you just for one freaking day just not do that instead i'm going to have you do this i'm going to i'm going to suggest that you go around all day long and just say there is nothing but god there is nothing but god it's all God, it's all love, it's all good. So that's what he told, I guess, somebody he was meeting with in his days to do. And he said, watch the miracles that take place when you put your focus on the kingdom of God, which is within you, which is all that is. So I suggested this to a few of my clients and one of them, she took it and ran and did it right away. And in just a couple days ago, she posted, and she's also in the Rosie Life Course and Community, and she's in the Platinum Program. She's like in everything, right? Because when you're in the Platinum Program, I give you access to all of my, every, if I have something, you guys get it, whatever it is. I, you guys have access to it. Um, any courses, programs, books, whatever, okay? But anyway, she posted in the community and she said, I did it. And she said, I was so stuck on some things. And the next day I received so many, uh -huh, I received the actual ideas on what action to take on certain things that I needed to do about her business. She couldn't see it before. And she was frustrated and she was able to see it and take these different actions. The other thing, and then the next day she said, Every, she went to work and found out that there was bonuses that are going to be having because I guess her company did really well. And everybody was going, oh my God, I wonder how much our bonus is going to be and blah, blah, blah. And everybody's excited, right? And in her mind, she said, I'm going to get the biggest bonus out of everybody. And that's it. And she kept go going with, there's nothing but God. There's nothing but God. I guess a little while later or the next day, whatever, I don't know the timing of it exactly, 
she got called into her, her boss's office because it was her turn to go get her check for her bonus, right? So she goes in there and the boss says, here's your check. And by the way, you got the biggest bonus. That's right, folks. She did that. But notice how it was like no effort involved because you're the only one saying this is effort, that this has to be work. There is no work. It's clear. Be still and know that I'm God. Sit your butt down. Remember who you are. Remember that it's already yours. I gave you everything. I have given you the kingdom of God. That's God telling us all. I already gave it to you. What more do you want? Why are you begging and asking and praying on your knees and efforting and, and sweating your little, your, your little hair out of worrying about where your stuff is? Do you, because I already gave it to you. Can't, can't you accept my gift? I gave it to you and accepting it. But you're like, no, I got to do something. I got, I got to be the doo-doo person. And that's what I call these, my clients that come and say, I, I, okay, so how, what do I need to do to be that? I said, listen to your question. You're still focused on doing. Stop being the doo-doo person and just be. Be still and know I am God. I, I, it's very clear. You don't have to do anything. You already made the decision. You already pointed out what you wanted. And that's already clear. And you can tell yourself if you want to remind yourself and tell yourself that's what I chose. I'm her. I'm her. I'm her. I'm her. That's cool. But don't think that that's going to make anything happen. That's not causing anything to happen because you already have it. You already made it happen before you even asked for it. And you didn't even make it happen because it was happened for you. Remember, it was a gift. So it was already happening. And now you're just pointing it out saying, I'm her. I'm her. I'm her. You're, do you see? It's a lot easier than we're thinking it is. So here are the phases that I've noticed, and I want to preface this, that this is coming from my experience, number one. Two, this is what I've seen in a lot of people, in my clients, and, and, and this is some of the stuff that I went through. And I'm talking about people that come from that, they don't, they don't know anything about law of assumption, like we're starting there okay, to people that have been studying it for their whole life, all right? And these different phases are not mandatory. They, in fact, they're, they're nowhere written that you have to go through them, right? But they are phases that we all go through, and I pull these out from, from the book of John in, that, in that, uh, that lecture from Neville Goddard, that one greater than John. And I'm going to show you what biblically there, he's talking about. Because remember, John the Baptist was the one that was like sacrificing, him eating, him doing, and he was just preaching the coming of the Messiah. That was what he was doing. And John the Baptist was the cousin of Jesus. And Jesus, when he arrived, and John was like, oh, yeah, dude, okay, it's about time. You got to go out and tell him everything. Well, here's, here's the difference. And I'm going to kind of give you a little glimpse of this, okay? First, first phase, let's call it. You believe that there's you, I, and that there's a 3D, and that notice the arrows, and that the 3D is showing you what you can have, what you can do, and what you have a limitation towards. Like you have to work with it. You got to do what the 3D is telling you to do. And that this is what you're qualified for. This is what you can have. This is where you grew up. So this is what you're used to. This is your beliefs. Um, this, is, this is all the education you have. Then this is all you can do. You can't have any more. You can't do any more. Okay, it, the 3D showing you that the 1% has all the money and that you got you to gotta fight to get your little pie, but you're never going to be that 1%. That's not you. This, that, this is that kind of thinking. People telling you, doctors telling you what you can feel, what you can look like, what can happen to your body. People telling you, I don't want to be with you. No, thank you. Right? That this is you, just that you just have to receive and accept 
what the 3D is showing you. This is where most people start off, okay? Not everybody, remember, not everybody feels like it is what it is. That's what it feels like. It feels like you're looking at 3D, at a life reality, and like stuff is just happening out there, and I don't know what's going on out there. And you're just like, it just is what it is. And I'm just, I'm just a little squirrel trying to get a nut in the world, right? That's what it feels like. You're just looking at, at some life, at some reality, and that it is what it is. And yet you can't change it. Good luck, right? And I'm stuck with this. You're stuck with what you got. You're stuck with the parents you got. You're stuck with the life you got. You're stuck with the body you got, you're stuck with the conditions you're in, you're stuck in the country you live in, the city you live in, you're stuck in the house you're in, you're stuck with what you got, you're stuck. That's, that's just how it is. That is separation at its finest. Chef kiss. Get it? Then you're just like, hold the phone. Somebody told me about manifesting. Law of attraction, law of assumption. What is that? And then you start looking and you're reading into it and you're just like, ooh, hell yeah, this sounds, this sounds cool. I'm going to, I'm going to try these tricks, tips, techniques, processes. I got, all I got to do this. All I got to do is this and I can have a million dollars in 24 hours. All I got to do this and I'll get a text message in, in two seconds. Uh, uh, all I got to do is this and then this will happen. Oh, oh, do you see just all of a sudden you, you go from it is what it is to like you get some hope right? It feels like you got it. You're like, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. But 3D is not changing. It's not changing. It's still triggering me. Do you see frowny face? Frowny face, right? And then it's smiley face because now you got hope. Now you got some hope. Now you got, oh, nope. Oh, now I learned some stuff and you might even get a little movement right? And you're just like, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's keep going, right? But you're still seeing the 3D is showing you who you are, that the 3D is still showing you that it tells you what's reality. Let's like, wake up to reality. Wake up. The struggle's real, right? Wake up to reality, and that this is what your reality is. Look what you live. Well, look where you're living. Look what you're driving. Look at that job you got to go to. That's reality. You can be smiling all you want inside, but this is your reality. You see it? Yeah. Learn to live with it. That's what it feels like. And it's still separation. Because yes, you're starting to see that I can do things, and, and, but it feels frustrating it feels frustrating. It feels like you're doing all the right things, that you're doing the right techniques, that you did the coaching, that you did the books, that you did all this stuff. And it feels like this is BS. And almost this is where people feel delusional. This is where I hear that kind of thinking, right? But guess what? That this, that, that you wanting this, that you wanting more, that, that, that looks and feels delusional, right? When this up here, you guys, this first one, that's delusional to think that that 3D is outside of you and that you don't have control, that it is what it is. That's the most delusional statement ever. But then, so here's what I wanted to say about one greater than John. This is the state of John right here. Because John the Baptist he talked about the Bible. He spoke about the Messiah. He, he spoke about repent, change your ways. But he was telling people to stop doing this, stop doing that, and do this instead. That way you can enter the kingdom of God. He was like, don't smoke, don't drink, don't blasphemy, don't do that, do this, worship God, don't eat that, pray with me, follow this, do this, or do it the way that I'm telling you to do it, or otherwise you're doing it wrong. If you don't do it my way, my practices, my methods, my way, that my way works, it's my way. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. You've heard it, right? That's the state of John, right? Because what John didn't understand, and remember, this is a state of consciousness. What John didn't understand is that it's not physical movement that is the cause, but that it is mental movement, 
that you move in mind, that the Christ consciousness is a movement of mind. It's not in all the doing and not doing the techniques and practices. It's in the not, you got to be a good boy or good girl. You got to do something, not do something. It's not there. That it's all in the mind. So that's where I drew this little green squiggly line because that was the state of John. Okay. But then it talks about that when that, that the one greater than John, right? The one that greater than John, it's like the least in the kingdom, the least in the kingdom. In other words, the kingdom is within that knowingness that who you are, the least of them is greater than John. Be, why? Because you know that the movement is in the mind. It's not in the doing. It's not in that begging, affirming, asking, writing out things on pieces of paper until you're blue in the face and beating the subconscious mind into submission. It has nothing to do with that. So the least of you is greater than any of those techniques, any of the efforts that you can do, any of anything that you've ever heard that you thought that you had to do, that the least that knows that is greater than all of those things. So the next phase I wrote down as three is, okay, oh, I see it. I put my fa happy face on. By the way, happy face does not mean you have to feel happy, be happy, blah, blah, blah. Happy face just means that I know who I am and I, I know I have decided what I want. This is who I am. Regardless of the outside, this is what I want. But notice the frustration here. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing what I want. <laughs> right? But I'm looking at the 3D. Now, notice the arrows change. It go from the 3D is affecting me, the 3D is triggering me, the 3D is bothering me, but they said, but she said, but this is happening, right? Notice the arrows change. Now, I know that as within, so without. So what I do within is love. What I do within the 3D, notice that the 3D has a sad face here still, sad, 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 right? But inside here, you know, you still see yourself as that person you want to be. I get it. I am the 3D. So I realize I, I must see I'm the leader of the 3D of what I want to see in my 3D. I can't, it can't change without me. The 3D can't change without you. And that's what you know now. You're smiling within because you decided who you are and you know that you have to stay in that identity because the 3D can't change without your permission. It can only reflect. Now who's the boss now? Do you see before you thought the 3D was the boss triggering you, telling you what it is? Now who's the boss? You are the 3D. It's reflecting you. It's only showing you who you keep persisting that you are. It's, it's you see, it's, it's you. No, no, and you know that no matter what, even if the 3D is showing you frowny face, in other words, that you don't have what you want, you're still within and you know it's you and you persist because you're like, it's okay, 3D. I know that it's my job. I know that it's my job to remain in that identity, that you're just listening to me. You're just reflecting me. It's not your job to show me anything. It is my job to remain here in my wish fulfilled and God is doing all the unfolding and work through me into you. So you do you, boo, 3D. You keep doing you because I'm the one in charge. It's not your job. It's my job to persist and my father in me that does the work through me. God, source, the universe, infinite intelligence is doing all of the work through me and he's doing it all. All the changing, shuffling around, whatever the hell terminology you want to use, okay, doesn't matter. It's I'm persisting in my decision, regardless of what I'm looking at. It's not your job. It's my job to remain and say who I am. And it's not about until it conforms, until it changes. It's already there. There is only the ever present now, ever present here. Everything is here. You're not, it's like nothing is coming out of the woodworks or out of, out of the sky, okay? It's already there, but you're changing in mind to the version of you that 
who you desire to be so that you can then see what was there all along so that you can see that you always had it so that you can then see oh my god all i had to do is shift in my mind meaning assume affirm imagine whatever you want to do and then that last phase is of course what i see within i now see without i see it i imagined it right I, re I imagined what I wanted. I relabeled 3D conditions as reflecting who I am. I no longer looked at the 3D as it being responsible to show me something or give me something. You, it's doing its job. It's just reflecting who I am. I don't care how much you say that. I've been doing that and it didn't work. Really? Because the 3D is literally always showing you what you're focused on. It doesn't make mistakes. <laughs> the 3D doesn't make mistakes. It's you. It's you. You can tell yourself all day long and defend yourself all day long. I've been doing this for five years, for 10 years, for 20 years. You, you can try to do that, but the 3D is not going to mess you over. It has your back. It's showing you exactly what you keep focusing on, what you're aware of. And if you're, if you're saying, I'm saying it, but it's not happening, right? Then you're more focused on it's not happening because someone that's already being that person wouldn't notice that it's not happening. Do you see? So that's okay. Instant shift. Remember, everything's now. Just don't waste another second. I remember in a lecture, Neville, somebody made a question like this to Neville said, it's not working for me or I'm not seeing the changes or whatever. And he said, then what are you doing right now? Why are you telling me this? If you notice that it's not here, then good. Listen to what you're saying to yourself and stop and shift. Do you stop and shift? Notice what you're saying to yourself that it's not here and say, hell no. It, I am that person. I am that person. Instead, what, what many of you want to do is you look at the it's not here and then you try to figure out why it's not here. And then, then you want to understand, does it? can you do it instantly? And then you look for success stories proving that it can happen for you. And then you look for reasons why it's not here. And then you're going to find umpteen million coaches telling you because you're not feeling worthy or not deserving because you need to heal an abandonment wound. Or I know I'm, I'm watching TikTok. I got you guys. I'm listening to this stuff. And all of this stuff and people telling you that you got to heal trauma or that you got to fix something or that you're broken or, or whatever it is. I, and then you're going to go down these rabbit holes looking for things to fix. Nothing's wrong with you. You're perfect. In fact, I'm going to tell you right now, the struggle is not real. It's, it's not real. There is no struggle. People love to say the struggle's real. There's no struggle. You're making it up. There is no struggle. There is no problem. There is nothing wrong. And the moment you accept that, that there's only good, there's only God, no matter what you look at, there's good, there's God, there's love, there's power inside of what you're looking and judging that is bad or unwanted. There's pure power potential in the thing that you're looking at. It is pure power and potential to move now if you would just look at that same thing from a different perspective, from the perspective of who you desire to be. And if you have a hard time doing that, go walk around like Joseph Murphy said, right? There is nothing but God. Say, I don't know what I'm doing, if I'm doing it right or wrong, but it doesn't matter. I don't care anymore. I don't care if I'm doing it right or wrong because I know with God, I can do no wrong. And so there's nothing but God. There is nothing but God. Oh, you guys, I'm just like, like vibing over here. Okay. Like chills from head to toe, because that's the truth. There is nothing but God. That's all there is. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and thank you for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing to The Rosie Life. And you guys, I appreciate, there's like this little section in YouTube where I get to see if how, if how many people share content. And there's a lot of you. There's 
lots of you sharing my content and I please keep sharing. Thank you so much <laughs> for doing that. Thank you for being a part of the Rosie Life. Thank you members for being a member on the membership channel. And thank you to all my community members and to my platinum program members. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate your support and your love so, so much. I'm so honored to be a part of all your lives and I'm eternally grateful. Thank you. And I will see you soon. Bye.